You might have definitely heard about this company called Nokia. This is one of the first companies that started selling commercial communication phones or cell phones and they were the king on it for at least 20 years, making the latest innovative technology for consumer use. But these days, you don't hear the name of the company anymore. So what exactly went wrong? In order to know what went wrong with the company, we have to go to the beginning where Nokia Corporation started. For starters, in 1967, Nokia Corporation was formed through the merger of three companies. The new company manufactured products including paper towels, cars and bicycle tires, rubber boots, communication cables, television and con other consumer electronics, personal computers, generators and robotics etc. Here is a picture of Nokia television and a VCR from 1990s called ITT Nokia Television and ITT Nokia VCR. But you had no idea Nokia also made electronics like these. Nokia's first cell phone was called Nokia City Man which was released in 1987 which was huge and was the first portable phone. The design of the cell phone has been evolving ever since and they started to make the devices smaller and smaller and more durable as the time went by. By 2000s, they were making the most compact and affordable phones. Two phones which reached the peak of popularity at that time was Nokia 3310 which came out in the year 2000 and in 2003 the Nokia 1100 handset was launched. They were not just making the same phone which they first made and making improvements to it like Samsung Galaxy S1 to the S21 but they were also not shying away from innovation. In an attempt to capture the gaming market, Nokia combined a video game console and a mobile phone in the N-Gage. N-Gage attempted to lure gamers away from the Game Boy Advance by including telephone functionality. This was unsuccessful partly because the buttons designed for a telephone were not suited for gaming. There are also more innovative phones such as the Nokia 6600 released in 2003 with a VGA camera, Bluetooth and expandable memory. The Nokia N95 released in 2007 with a 5 megapixel camera which the first iPhone did not even have if I remember correctly. At last, the Nokia 808 PureView released in 2012 with a 41 megapixel camera and a 1.3 gigahertz CPU. All the phones which I talked about right now had really groundbreaking specs like a modern flagship but the software which it accompanied was Symbian OS. Symbian OS was a good operating system until the iPhone came and when the iPhone came things started to change. Symbian OS was not supporting multi-touch whereas iPhone and Android supported it. iOS and Android had comparatively simpler design provided easier and much more centralized infrastructure to create and obtain third-party apps which Symbian OS lacked. In June 2008, Nokia announced the acquisition of Symbian with the objective of creating the Symbian platform as a royalty-free software that other companies can use. Nokia stepped into the wrong direction here as iOS and Android were just much better than Symbian and most manufacturers went for Android instead of Symbian even though Symbian was royalty-free. The infamous Nokia was now not able to sell any of the phones that they were manufacturing because they were being overshadowed by the iPhone and newcomers in the smartphone industry such as Samsung but they were still went on to do their own thing until they were bought by Microsoft. Microsoft was working on their own Windows Phone OS and were lacking hardware so they bought Nokia and in theory their merch should make the best smartphone out there because Nokia was amazing with hardware and Microsoft was experienced as Apple in software. But that did not work out as well. Now is the time where Nokia was Thanos snapped from existence and they needed redemption. And here comes HMD Global with all their might in buying back Nokia and making Android smartphones. This time the new Nokia was not ready to do any of the mistakes that they had already done in the past, but it still did not work out. Don't get me wrong, Nokia had everything going for them with the new acquisition by HMD Global but they still persisted in doing the same thing which they had been doing in the past. More on that later. But after HMD had bought them, they were having a good redemption. They were making stock Android phones with Android One, they had Zeiss optics for their cameras, they were providing timely software updates for their phones as well. 
But if you look at this HMD global sales chart for every quarter, you might notice that the chart, first of all, had a great start. This might be because they were they had a nostalgic factor to them as well, which gave them the sales boost in the year that they were coming back, which was 2017. And then the sales were moderate in the year 2018 when they were making phones uh, in, a in a compelling price and moreover they were selling some of their mid-range smartphones in India, which are one of the biggest smartphone markets right now. From the start of 2019, it all started going downhill for Nokia. And this was the time that they had released their new Nokia 9 PureView smartphone, which had a Pentelens camera system, which was pretty much useless with a bad in-display fingerprint scanner and a lot of software bugs. And by that graph, we know that after that disaster of a smartphone, their sales had been going down because they were not able to meet customer satisfaction. You can definitely blame the sales of 2020 on the pandemic, but the 2019 sales figures were entirely the mistake of their company. The prices of their smartphones was rising as Nokia wanted to make as much profit from them and they were focused so much on durability other than specs like their old feature phones, but they were people out of their time. The smartphones were never as durable as feature phones and they never will be. The price that they set for their smartphones was higher than what they were supposed to be and everything rolled with one another and made their brand invaluable for the second time. Oh, and there's one more thing. Nokia was talking about releasing an under-display camera phone, the world's first, but that never came into reality and now they have announced a new event on 8th of April. Let's wait and see if it's an exciting event or an event to announce more feature phones. So that's been it. My name is Harish and I'll meet you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Oh.